Hey, welcome back guys, it is Crazy Walter, and I'm going to be bringing you guys an update on the Avigan Glyph. So I've been using the system for kind of a while now, and I figured I'd show you guys some ways to do a VR desktop in that scenario. So, I've currently got a program set up which is called 3 ds Spaces, and this program is essentially a virtual desktop, so if you guys have heard of Big Screen from Steam, or if you've just heard of virtual desktop in general, then this is something that's going to be really familiar to you. So I'm just going to go ahead and get started here, and I'm going to just drop myself right into the the 3D desktop here that I've set up, and um, I'm going to show you guys sort of the intricacies of it, where it's got its shortfalls compared to big screen and virtual desktop, and we'll just kind of go from there. So let's go ahead and get started here. I'm going to be taking a look at the system in front of me, which is currently um, 3D or by 3D, and this one is on a virtual island. So What's really cool with this setup is you can use your mouse to move up and down. Um, you can also use it to move left and also strafe to the right. Um, so as you can see, this is the, um, the desktop with all the icons I have in front of me right now. Now you can also navigate using the WASD keys the same way as you would for a mouse, except that the W key and the S key make you move forward and back respectively. Space bar on the keyboard allows you to move up. Shift allows you to move down, and the E and R keys allow you to basically pan from left to right. So it's a very, very cool system. Um, so far, I think my only issues with it are that A, the island that's represented in front of you is, um, it's kind of complicated to navigate. So you have certain parts of your computer kind of just lying around, so like you've got a bunch of different folders and whatnot. Now it looks pretty as hell, but ultimately when the layout's like this, it makes it a little bit more difficult to look around and see what it is that you actually want to take a look at. So that's the, the one downside I've kind of found so far is that it's a little bit clunky. I really wish that they implemented Connect support like they said on their website, but currently they said they're kind of abandoning that project, uh, mostly because they were focusing on Connect 1 and not Connect 2, and now that Connect 2 is effectively out, this is basically what they've come up with. Now the whole space looks pretty great, and uh, you can actually snap to the desktop by clicking on this icon here, and then you can just go ahead and zoom back out if that's what you want to do. Um, you can get a little bit closer and also at the same time just kind of go up and see which, you know, sort of icons and things you want to get into. Now the, the issue that I found with this is that it by default kind of opens up a certain number of programs in kind of their own window, which is not what I actually like to see. I would have preferred that they opened up within the, the interface here, um, but currently they do not, so for example, if I want to open, say, my antivirus software, what ends up happening is it actually opens it in its own um, regular window as opposed to popping up and opening in here like you would expect it to. So I think there are definitely some shortfalls and shortcomings. You know, obviously, it doesn't quite have the, uh, the same effect or the same immersion that the other bigger competitors of it have because you don't have the tracking, there's no head tracking going on, so you can't turn your head to look around the desktop. Um, but, you know, for the Avigan Glyph so far, it is probably one of the best options available to you um, to have a desktop working environment where you can move around and actually look at things, um, you know, by yourself. Ultimately, I think it's going to get updated and we're going to get some slightly better support for um, different programs as well as different sort of setups. So, for example, Connect and also the Leap will allow you to sort of interface a little bit better with this than you currently can. Um, now, there are a couple of different settings here. Um, they do give you the option to basically go and change into things like the Star Trek Voyager or, for example, something such as uh, Formula One setup and so on. So it's very cool. It does give you a lot of options to do different things. I personally like it a lot. Um, it still has a long way to go, but uh, this is what it is right now. So if you guys want to take a look at it, I'm going to send the links down in the description below um, so you can check out that software. Now there's yet another one that I'm going to launch here in a second, which is called Ibex. And Ibex is really neat because it actually is another sort of very similar um, setup to what you would have with the um, the virtual display or a virtual desktop. And once again, you know, you can move around in this virtual space for now. It just has this kind of grassy field um, setup and look. 
Um, their plan is to have a little bit more of basically 3D setups um, going on with this and more monitors. Currently it only supports just one. And I haven't been able to figure out how to get my desktop to not mirror, which is a little bit strange. But those are the settings that you have for the time being. You can move around with WASD and it's pretty straightforward as far as that's concerned. You can kind of just go ahead and look around. If you press H, a little prompt comes up that tells you how to do what. And uh, it's got some pretty neat features. So for example, if you close the help prompt, you can actually go ahead and open up um, your application launcher and you just navigate that with all kinds of um, keys. Now it decided to crash on me right there. Well, let's just go ahead and launch it again. So if you use the application launcher, you can then go ahead and just use the WASD keys to open stuff up. But unfortunately, just like Space Sys, what ends up happening is it ends up opening Chrome in its own separate window, which is really frustrating, or any other application for that matter, so you can't um, quite use it to its full extent, unfortunately. Um, now the other option is there's a shortcut to have Control shift g uh, which allows you to control the desktop, so as you can see, it now pops up and populates this, and you can see it in the background there. But the downside, once again, is that you still cannot have everything operate within this particular environment. Now, um, I'm going to do an update video once I do figure out how to make this work a little bit better. Um, so far, this is what it is. Again, it does not support any kind of head tracking for the moment. I think it works better on Linux and Mac systems, and in the case of Mac, you can actually tie your iPhone to it and work with it that way. But it is what it is so far. We are unfortunately still very limited with the Avigan Glyph, but this is what it is for the time being. Now, as you can see, this has been really designed more for the Oculus Rift, and you can actually trigger this to work in 3D. In my case, I'm not doing a 3D video, so I decided not to turn on uh, my device's 3D, but uh, this is kind of how it works so far. Um, once again, I'm going to try and get out a few more kind of features out of this and see what I can show you guys next. But for the time being, this is basically it. So there are two programs I found to work with the Avigan Glyph, and this just happens to be one of them. So look out for more of my videos on this topic.